Hey guys, Christy here. Excited to do this short video for you about the simple email marketing sales tips for service businesses. And these are just some really simple key tips to keep top of mind. There's so many different things kind of flying around your head right now as it relates to putting together your newsletter. Um, I wanted to put this short list together because these are, these are simple reminders of key things that make a big difference that I find um, get overlooked really easily. So this is more or less like a cheat sheet that you can use to make sure that you're uh, not stepping over these key fundamentals, these simple email marketing sales tips, because guys, we're not sending this email newsletter out just for our health. We're not doing it to be nice. We're not doing it because we think it would be um, a fun activity for our business. We're doing it to improve our bottom line, to keep a fence around our customers and prospects, to get our offers out there. This is a very specific tool that we're using and we want to use it strategically. Okay. So here's some simple tips to help with selling through your newsletters, uh, that maybe are as clear and direct. You would think about them. And then some of the things that you would never really think about that are really simple concepts that, that make a really big difference for the person that's reading your newsletter. So let's start with number one. You always want to make sure that you are, um, sending from a real person. What do I mean by that? This, when you set up your email newsletter, you can um, update who the email is coming from and also who the reply to email is. And typically you have the option to keep these the same or use a different email. I'm simply talking about the from email address, right? Who is the email coming from? That should be a person, a first name and a last name. That is the most ideal. You can include the business name in with that or have some sort of brackets if you feel like that's necessary. But you want the newsletter to be coming from a person because people like to connect with a real person. And so maybe that's the business owner. Maybe it's a maybe it's the um, the office manager. I'm, whoever it is in your business that you want this e-newsletter coming from that's who the, the, the from email should be, right? That person, right? If it's Christy, then it needs to be, if, if my signature is on the newsletter, if it's, um, if that's who it's coming from, then that's who the email should be coming from as it relates to the from email address. It should be my email that they're receiving this email from. So be really thoughtful about that. You really, really a hundred percent. I highly suggest you stay away from an info at a support at, or a generic general email, that is a no-go. I highly advise against that. Okay. Find a real person that you can have that email come from. Number two, make your email newsletter aesthetically pleasing and easy to consume. This should be pretty easy guys, because we already went through in, um, in one of our other video trainings, how to set up your e-newsletter template and also your promotional e email that you would be sending out. So that is already built into those trainings. But just as a reminder, you really want to keep with simple um, sentence structure. You don't want to have these big blocks of text, just a big chunk of text on your newsletter. So break things up. I oftentimes will do, you know, um, two sentences max in a paragraph. So it just kind of depends on, on how you want to approach this, but you want to really break things down into small bite-sized pieces to make it aesthetically pleasing and easy on the eye for people to read. Using bold italics and underline to draw the eye to specific offers or certain elements of your newsletter. Very simple, but effective strategy. So if there's a link that you really want to, um, to bring attention to, being able to bold, obviously it's going to be a different color, but being able to even bold that uh, will bring even more attention to that link. If there's some sort of special offer that you want to highlight, bring that to somebody's attention by italicizing it or bolding it. Bring more attention to key elements of your newsletter using these simple, simple formatting tools. All right, next we want to make sure that our headlines um, are, are structured in such a way where they deliver messaging. If somebody is skimming your newsletter and you have your headlines outlined in really clear messaging, then people are going to be able to see exactly what's being offered at each, each section of your newsletter and decide if they need to go into more detail to read in more detail about that specific topic. If you don't have really good headlines or sub headlines, then the skimmers are going to skim right past everything. So 
Again, we're just kind of considering the different types of readers that we have on our list. And for those headline skimmers, we need to have really quality headlines that are catchy, uh, that get them to um, excited to read a little bit more and drive more depth and keeping with short sentences. So we don't want long run on sentences. We wanna be clear, quick, concise to the point. People are busy this day and age. They're getting bombarded with tons of marketing messages. That doesn't mean they're not interested in what you have to offer, but be clear and, and concise in your communication. You don't want a lot of fluff. All right, next we're gonna be talking about number three, which is our subject lines. So you really wanna focus on your subject lines, guys. This is, this is the first step in getting somebody to actually see your offer. If you don't have a solid subject line, they're not gonna open your email. And if they don't open your email, they're never gonna see your offer. So I can't emphasize it enough how critical it is to really focus in on coming up with gr really great and strong subject lines um, and making sure that uh, you're, you're, you're testing that and you're really focusing in on what your open rates are. So in addition to your subject lines, once somebody does open, um, you really, it's a, you want to create a slippery slope. So the next step is the first sentence in that first paragraph that they're going to read, right? So we want to really hook them right from the beginning. So really consider your subject line, making sure that the first sentence of your newsletter is really compelling because that's going to encourage people to keep reading. Number four, you want to deliver on any promises that you put in your subject line. Hugely important. The last thing you want to do is trick people into opening. That is not a way to build trust. In fact, it is a quick way to get people to opt out of your list and to, to really just piss people off because there's nothing worse than somebody saying that, hey, there's something here for you. And then, oh, by the way, you get that if you do X, Y, and Z, right? You don't want to trick people. You don't want to um, create these uh, kind of uncomfortable situations inside of your emails where you're not really delivering on your promise. Number five, you want to send the same email with different subject lines to those who didn't open the first time. This is a great way to start testing other subject lines. So let's say you send an email out on a Tuesday and um, and you've, you've got a list of a thousand people and of those thousand people, you're able to get 300 folks to open, right? You get 300 people to open, but you have a whole set, a list of 700 people that never opened. So let's say I sent on a Tuesday, maybe that Thursday or, or, or maybe the following Tuesday, it kind of just depends on uh, the way you've got things structured. But let's just say two days later, I decide to resend the same exact email newsletter with a different subject line to the 700 people that did not open, right? And then that allows you to uh, get more people viewing that newsletter and you can start to see how people are interacting with different types of subject lines, right? So a great way to test right there. Number six, you wanna create urgency with an irresistible offer inside your newsletter, right? So you have a section inside your newsletter. We already broke that down in um, when we built out our template. So we always have an offer, always, always have an offer in our newsletter. And you wanna make sure that that offer is irresistible. So um, if you haven't already, there is a video talking about how to create an irresistible offer. It's a simple nine step process. Definitely go watch that video and it will change your world as it relates to uh, how you think about offers and just your ability to sell overall. So it's going to open up a lot of doors for you. Number seven, the 80-20 rule of relationship building to sales. So we want to make sure that 80% of our newsletter is focused on relationship building, education, providing them with something that is of value to them in their world, in their life. And then the 20%, the other, the other portion of the newsletter is really dedicated to sales, your irresistible offer, right? Being able to present that both in text format, inside the body copy of your newsletter, and then also a gra in graphic format, right? We're going to have that section at the bottom of our newsletter that has our irresistible offer represented in graphic form, right? So again, all this stuff I go 
go over in the how to how to build your email newsletter template uh, video training. So if you haven't gone through that, then I would say go check that out. But this is this is the 80-20 rule, and this is really important, guys. Otherwise, people are gonna really get sick and tired of you. They're not gonna wanna open your emails because you're gonna become predictable. But if 80% is focused on relationship building and you're actually giving them value, something that they look forward to every single month, then they're gonna be excited to open, right? And that's going to get your offer in front of those eyeballs every single month. So you really kind of have to play the balancing act there. So um, don't become overzealous and um, too much of a salesman in your newsletters. And number eight, last but not least, you wanna use preview text if available. So um, most uh, email platforms offer some sort of preview text which shows up um, in, when somebody receives an email. It's like the first, uh, depending, on, depending on their email, maybe it's the first 25 characters or 30 characters. But if you have the ability to use that, you want to. Uh, you wanna be able to, to maximize your opportunity to communicate with people. Uh, oftentimes people will just step over or leave this section blank. It's a great opportunity to get a few more keywords or compelling um, um, elements into your, uh, showcasing your offer or talking about what's inside of your newsletter. It's another way to further connect with your list in order to get that open, right? So you have your subject line and then you have your preview text. So these are two key elements that come in and work together in order to get the open so you can get your offer view right so you definitely want to leverage the preview text if that's available um, there's there's probably uh, you know tons of other sales and marketing tips out there these are the key elements that I find people forget about overlook are simple tweaks to your your mindset and your approach that can make a big difference so write these down or, or grab these um, and and start to make sure that either you or whoever your team member is that's executing on your newsletters is keeping these concepts in mind because they're key key tips to making sure that your newsletter is as profitable as possible and making the strongest impact with your list as possible. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.